Hey, 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 we're breaking down products today. Ooh, I started out with a strong one. Right away, Jaquel, I had a little rhyme. It's gonna be a great day. <laughs> Except for my head's cut off. Let me adjust the camera a little bit, sorry. Okay, so first I wanna know if you guys have any questions about, you know, my hair challenge is this, because then I can help you make sure that you're utilizing your um, products to their fullest potential in every way, shape, or form. So I'm going to start with the foundational products, which is like a shampoo and conditioner. I wanna teach you how to use them. And I think you can apply this to, even if you don't have our products, there's a lot of them, a lot of the principles that I'm going to give that you can use. Sorry, I have a, something in my, um, so there's a lot of these tips that can be applied to other products, not just ours. And then there's going to be some that are specific to just ours. So. I'm going to start with shampoo. So when you start with your shampoo, there's a couple of things I want you to really think about. Um, I want you to think about how you apply it. So when you start with shampoo, you want your hair to be soaking wet, okay? So the reason you want soaking wet is very different than you know what you're gonna use with conditioner, which is where I want your hair to be more like really wrung out. So you're going to do soaking wet with shampoo and now, there's going to be a little bit of this that's specific to our product. So with our product, what I would want you to do is shampoo once, and then if you like your hair to be, um, if you like more of a suds in your hair, you can use a second shampoo. So you'll shampoo, rinse, shampoo again. If you like a softer feel, a softer result in your hair, then you would shampoo twice as well. If you like your hair to be more full, you can use one shampoo. If you find that your scalp has an overproduction of oil, because you might be just switching from other products or something that are um, a harsher detergent, ours is a very soft detergent, um, or a cleanser in it. And so you'll, I'll want you to shampoo twice to get more oil removed from your scalp at the start. So the way you can tell that is when you're shampooing, if your hair feels kind of clumpy still when you're shampooing, then you can try shampooing twice and then you'll feel like it becomes more freed up. So that's a, something that you could probably apply to any shampoo. But ours specifically, when you want your hair to feel softer, um, there, that's when you can use two shampoos. Okay, so for conditioner, when, after you shampoo and rinse, and then if you sh shampoo twice, then you shampoo or, and rinse the second time. Um, I really like, I'm not a big believer in that the foam is the big be all end all for a shampoo. So, you know, I just, I think that's an important for, thing for you to note that it isn't like just the be all end all, right? If you get a lot of suds, then this thing's great. And if you don't, then it's not great. I, I don't believe that the suds is the big deterrent, determine, the thing that determines whether your hair is going to turn out great or not. I'm a big believer in not in the shower. I care about how your hair looks out of the shower when it's not wet. That's my big aim is for you to succeed there. I don't care as much about the feel in the shower. So with conditioner, what I want you to do is wring out your hair as best as you can. Okay. So I really want you to wring it out and get it as uh, dry as you can in the shower. Now, sometimes, you know, some people have a washcloth in there that could maybe help wring it out. But for me, it's just, I think it's as much as you can get out with your hands is sufficient for, in my mind. Okay. So then you want to go ahead and use the conditioner. Now I didn't talk about this with shampoo, but I like this distribution method for both. I don't like to put it in and then get it on my hands and then distribute it because I believe that some of the stuff gets distributed into your hands that's meant for in your hair. So I think it's really important to go with the conditioner and then you use it, your hand like a spatula and apply it and then you can keep doing that. That's really important to me because then you're not distributing like some of the important ingredients that you want on your hair into your hands. So I think that's an important one that I don't think everybody does. So I wanted to share that with you. I think I saw a question that yeah, says, does this work really good on curly hair? Yes, I think this works really well on curly hair because the way I've geared our shampoo and conditioner is to hydrate your hair to the point where it's not staticky, where it's more full. Um, and it also, when your hair is hydrated, it doesn't tend to grow 
in humidity. The reason that is, is when hair grows in humidity, what it's doing is growing to absorb more moisture out of the air. And that's why hair grows in humidity. It means that you're not getting enough hydration in your hair. Next, let's talk about what are the next products you use and why? Okay, so the next product that I would say to use is the Upstage. So Upstaged is one that I like to apply like this. You shake it up really good because there's lots of different uses for Upstage. So we really want to get all of the different aspects and ingredients to get, um, you know, like equally distributed on your hair. So the way I like to do it is spray like this, lift up and spray underneath. It's just because it disperses the spray better, works a lot better for you. So what that will do right away is it will create more shine and more connection in your hair. So it kind of teaches the hair to hold better, to feel better, to, um, it, it can really shape the hair the way you want it. So it's setting it up for success. And meanwhile, it's giving you a little bit more shine in your hair, like a glow, not shine like grease. It's more like a glow. And it also teaches the hair to like hold. So it can hold together better and it can also hold form better. And it can also, that helps if you are scrunching hair and you want it to hold that, you can use it in that same way. If you um, want your hair to hold curl better, it will do that. If you want your hair to hold straightening better, it will do that. And it also has the thermal protectant within it. So you can see just by spraying that in how different this side looks than this side. And I do have it in prior, so you can see what it did on dry hair. So this side has upstaged and this side doesn't. So you can see how it looks kind of more smooth and it looks a little bit more full and it's also able to hold. So whatever I wanna do from here on out, it's now prepped to do take whatever shape I want it to take. So you can think of this as like a molding spray, like it will mold your hair in the shape that you want it to be from here on, whether that's very curly or very straight. Okay, so can you spray this on dry hair? Yes, I just did. I sprayed it on, this is, it's got it in from my blow dry, from my blowout this morning. So I did spray lots of this in this morning and then I sprayed it in again now. I really think it's hard to overuse the spray um, when you're, I just don't, I, I don't know how to say it better than that. It's really hard to overuse the spray, even if it's an aggressive spray, because a lot of people are like, ooh, it's kind of aggressive, but it's okay. You can disperse it throughout your hair anyway. A thermal protectant, I do believe, like I didn't believe thermal protectants were important back in the day until I started experimenting with them. And then I started learning about how important a right one is. Now there are some that say they protect against your thermal damage and they actually don't. It's been found that they don't, which is interesting to me. Um, so like sometimes people will be using other products and over time it like actually has the opposite effect because there are certain ingredients that I think really accelerate heat. So anyway, just all thermal protectants are not created equally. So please choose wisely when you're choosing a thermal protectant. If your hair is showing signs of damage and you've been using that thermal protectant, stop using it and see what happens or change it up, try something else. Because sometimes it's just not the greatest for your hair. So you might want to try switching that up. With the root lift spray, I'm going to move to that. She yeah. how to put the root lift spray in. It seems sticky. What is the right way to use it? Okay, so how do you use the root lift spray? So, um, yeah, we'll go on to that. Um, let's talk about how to use this. So this is whenever you want your hair to hold somewhere and you, can, you want it to disperse more. So think about when you want a braid to be pulled apart this is a good use of it. If you want height because you want the hair to be pulled apart, it's a good use for the big time. And also if you want your curls to be built out more. So you can really spray it in here in the same way I sprayed the upstage. So I always spray with the intention of what my hair is in any product across the board. If you want your hair to do a certain thing, think of if I want my hair to have lift 
and hold, I wanna spray it up underneath. If I want my hair to be flat and smooth, I wanna spray up over top. So make sure you're spraying everything with purpose like that. So if I'm looking to build from underneath, I want to spray from underneath. So if I want this hair to be built up, I'm going to spray from underneath like this, not on top like this, okay? So I'm not looking to flatten and smooth, I'm looking to grow and lift. So you can see the difference of like how I've built up this side and this side is being more lean. So using products the right way can really help you achieve the look that you're looking to achieve, right? So if I wanted Upstage to help me make my hair feel more soft and smooth, then I would use it before my blow dry and then I don't need to apply after. You can see how this side, I wanted to build up the style so you can see how it's built out more. So that's how using products in different ways can really help you have a different experience with it. Next, um, selfie time. Let's talk about how to spray with purpose for hairspray. Again, if you're looking to build your hair up, you wanna spray underneath, okay? You can spray underneath and build up. So if you're looking to have bigger curls or more defined curls, um, you'll wanna spray up from underneath, okay? And if you're looking to straighten or hold a big overview of a style, you're looking to spray up over top like this. If you're looking to put your sporadic, what's the word I'm looking for, not static, like flyaways. If you're looking to take flyaways out, you're just going to spray down over top and then use your bottle to get all of that out of the way, okay? If you're looking to hold the face frame, spray up underneath and then shape it into place, okay? So now you've sprayed with purpose to hold. You can see this side is still holding because I put big time in it to hold over here. So that's kept it. So big time will hold it back more. Um, and then the spray will hold its kind of overview more. Thanks for your questions today. And hopefully you can get the styles you want out of your hair products after today. Thanks so much. Um, we'll see you next week. Bye.